Okay, good afternoon, everybody. All good? Um, if you didn't get any swag yet, we still have, so have some in front, uh, so afterwards you can get more. Um, but let's get started with the talk. Um, so this is about Going Elastic, um, the company I work for, and all our products, so I can kind of give you the overview of what we are doing. I'm from Vienna. I run a local database meetup there, so it's where I kind of get all my ideas about different databases and the general overview. And I run a Papers We Love group where we just read academic papers to get the background. Uh, but during the day, I'm working at Elastic. So I'm in the infrastructure team. I'm doing stuff like Docker, AWS, Jenkins, builds, deployments, helping out the team wherever I can. Uh, but at the moment, I'm pretty much out to do talks. So I've, yesterday I've arrived from Bucharest, tomorrow I'm going to France, so yeah, traveling the world, which is very nice. And talking about Elastic stuff, which is also very nice, as you will see. So just to get an idea, who is actually using Elasticsearch at the moment? Raise your hand. Okay, quite a few. Who is using Logstash and Kibana? Okay, a few less. Who is using Beats? Ah, one. Okay, very good. That's why I'm here. I can tell you more. Um, so... We can do this like two ways. Either I have some slides, I will show you the slides, I will show you a demo in the, in the end. Or we can skip the slides and do everything live, whichever you prefer. So who would prefer slides? OK, who would prefer demo all the time? OK, I think we have a majority for demos. I don't worry, the slides are. I will tweet the slides at the very end of the talk, so you, you get the slides anyway, so you won't miss any content. But then um, we can actually throw away the slides and start over. So what I'm doing is I have prepared a little project. This is on GitHub, so you can run it on your own. Um, it's called, or under my GitHub account, it's Xira, which is a rot 13 of my last name, which sounds very weird, but it's X E R double A. That is my GitHub account, and then you have a repository Vagrant Elastic Stack. And we have one of the branches is called V5, which is for the upcoming version of everything. So we will I will just show you the new and hot stuff. So at the moment this is an alpha version, uh, but by the end or during the third quarter of this year, this will be the stable version. So you will soon be able to use all the Good stuff I'm showing you. Um, so this is a Vagrant box. You can simply clone that very small repository to Vagrant up, and it will get all the software for you, and it will also configure everything for you. So what I have done yet, I have, is this big enough for you to see? Yes, I guess so, right? Um, so I have, this is the stuff I have here. This is just a, a simple Vagrant file. Uh, with some Ansible playbooks. I'm an Ansible guy. I'm spending lots of time on operations, so this is what I do. Um, and this is just setting up everything for you. So what I've done, uh, when I start up the Vagrant box, it will download all the dependencies using that little file. Uh, so I've already done this step, because otherwise you would need to wait for 10 to 15 minutes uh, just to download all the dependencies, since the Wi-Fi is not that fast. So I've done that already so we can get a quick start, uh, but all the rest we will do on demand, like walk through this whole system step by step. Um, so just to give you, so the box is already running, I'm simply SSH SSHing into my Vagrant box, and once you're inside there, uh, you have a folder mounted with Elastic Stack. again, these are the same files, uh, you can we will run them just one by one, but if you're in a hurry, so if we, I had done the slides, I would simply call the all sh script, and this will run all the steps for you. So you'd simply do vagrant up, log in, run the all sh, and then everything is up and running for you. We'll take a little more time just to walk through the steps and see how everything works together and what the components are, um, but still we'll do everything live. So uh, what I've already done in the past is, uh, let's cd into that, directory, and then I can say, so what this thing is, if you haven't seen Ansible yet, uh, it's just YAML, you just configure stuff together, it's actually, yeah, it's, it's not that complicated, here I'm for example just saying, uh, give me the headless version of the JDK 8, 
and install that into my VM. And I'm doing that with all the dependencies. So I'm currently we are, we are at alpha 2 of the version 5 of everything. And I'm simply downloading that and then installing the Debian package. And all the dependencies we're using, uh, we'll, go, we'll go through the dependencies, don't worry. So all of these have already been downloaded and are ready to use. So the first thing I need to do is configure Elasticsearch. Uh, but since I don't need to do anything specific, uh, Elasticsearch, I don't need to do any configuration. So we can skip the, the first file, actually. Elasticsearch, for those of you who haven't used it, Elasticsearch is what is actually storing the data and where it is indexed, so you can query the data. So Elasticsearch is then storing all your data. And this is, Elasticsearch was the first product we have, oh, that was started in 2010 uh, by our current CTO, Shai. And the story goes, his wife went to London, she wanted to become a chef, and she had lots of recipes, and he didn't find a proper job, so he wanted to help her. Uh, so he built some full text search, so she could easily search her recipes. So if she had 10 ingredients, uh, she could just search through all her re recipes and see which stuff do I have and what can I cook with them. So this is kind of how he started. Now they've switched roles. Now I think she's at home and, uh, I don't know, helping him and work, uh, doing the kids and whatever. And he's uh, out earning the money, but in the beginning it was the opposite, where she was earning the big bucks and he was just coding at home for fun. And this is kind of how Elasticsearch uh, started. And yeah, we've already installed that. And if we simply curl that, if I still know how to curl something. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Does that help? OK, because for me, that's also very hard to reach here. It's, it's OK? Perfect. Um, So wait, I'll make it slightly so. So you can see I, I just I have installed Elasticsearch. I'm just curling it. Uh, what it does is it speaks uh, HTTP and JSON. So you have a nice REST interfaces, and you can see okay, it's Elasticsearch in version alpha two, which will have whatever build stuff. And the first thing you can know is it's called Sauron. Why is it called Sauron? Um, if you don't define a name, it will pick a random Marvel comic name. So there's a huge list in the repository of probable Marvel comics, comic names, and there must be some person in the Marvel world, I don't think it's Lord of the Rings, and every time you start up your cluster, it will get a random name. So every time you start an Elasticsearch cluster, you will get a new random name. And then you can waste time by looking up the character and see what, it's, what the character is actually doing. Um, but we are not doing that. And the other thing you probably realize here, we have Lucene version 6. And that is because Lucene is just the library that's living inside of Elasticsearch. Uh, that is basically doing the hard work. So this is doing the indexing for the full text search. Um, and I often compare it to like Lucene is the, the engine of the car. And Elasticsearch then is the final car. So the car, Elasticsearch in that case, is providing the REST interface, is distributing your data, it's replicating your data, you have a nice DSL to query your data. This is all provided by Elasticsearch, but under the hood, the actual work is done by the library Lucene, and that is kind of driving the car. And since Elastic, the company, is now pretty big, uh, most of the commits into Lucene are now coming from Elastic, actually. So we are kind of driving that further. OK, so we have Elastic up and running. So the next thing we want to do is we configure Kibana. So I'm, it's just Ansible, it's just running the playbook. I'm simply th saying, configure Kibana for me. It just uh, does one or two steps, it's very quick, uh, and then everything should be up and running. So what this is, um, Kibana is the visualization part. Kibana is kind of the window into your data. So you can actually explore, query, and graph your data. It is a standalone node application. You simply run somewhere. And all the configuration I've done now is just say, OK, the Elasticsearch database or cluster is running on localhost, port 9200, like the default. Uh, query that instance to actually display anything. 
And then since uh, everything related to security is a commercial plugin, like we have alerting and monitoring and stuff, all of these are commercial plugins on top of Elasticsearch. Um, there is no th security at the moment. I've just put Nginx as a reverse proxy in front of it, so you have some kind of authentication. So we will now access Kibana. Let's see if it has come up. I hope so. So I'm proxying Kibana to port 8080 to the outside. So in my browser, I can simply try to access it. And hopefully, yes, it's loading up. And since I've already logged in uh, previously, it's, yeah, that, that doesn't break everything. Um, that is working. Okay, so this is Kibana on top of Elasticsearch. So just to give you a little idea what's actually going on, so we don't need that. This is called Console. In previous versions, it was called Sense. We just renamed it because Console is probably more intuitive. Uh, this is just a nice visual way uh, with syntax highlighting and auto-completion to interact with Elasticsearch. So I can simply, at the moment, there is nothing in the database uh, since I've just set it up. I can simply say I want to create my first document. For example, I want movies, movie one. So think of it kind of like this is the index, this is the type, and this is the ID of the document I want to in insert. Um, the index is like the database, and the type is like the table. They don't match 100%, so if you want to work with it, uh, read up on the terms what they actually do and when you should use which one. Uh, but this is just a general idea. So I'm creating an index, something where I put in all my movies, and then I have like one of the types I'm using in there is a movie, and with the ID one, I'm adding one movie. So I'm adding, for example, a title, and then I say, um, the film I'm adding is The Godfather, let's say. So I have The Godfather added, and do you know, does anybody know the director of The Godfather? Yeah, agreement, disagreement. Um, so Francis Ford Coppola was uh, the director of the film. I think they filmed it in 1972. And just to show you, this is not like a relational database where you have this flat structure, but you have JSON structure where you can simply can throw in, yeah, arrays, for example. So let's say we want to define the type, and I need to quote it. And I want to say this film was probably multiple things, so let's just say it's both a uh, crime and in the category drama. And I, if I didn't make any typos, I can simply click the send request and it will actually send my request. So of course you can do that on the console. You could just use curl and then export, uh, put the machine name, the port and everything in there and then quote something. But this way it's, it's much more nicer uh, and you have auto completion to actually do something. So when I run that, it looks like this succeeded because it tells me create it true. And what I can then easily do is I can simply say uh, get some data out of it. And you can say, OK, it found something. Um, and this is the data I actually put in. So this is working nicely. Um, and just to show you, it's not just a database. So you cannot just like give it a query and get the exact result back. But full text search is much more about uh, being like gray areas. Databases are much more like black and white. You have data, you have queries, stuff matches exactly, you get the result back. Full text search is much more like you have some stuff, you query something, and you get stuff that is matching better or worse. Uh, and you get a score for that. And based on that, you can, you don't need to care for, I don't know, if something is singular or plural in your database. You can simply uh, more or less con query for concepts. So. I'm querying data. The confusing thing is now I'm using a post, which is probably counterintuitive. Uh, but since we have a pretty nice query DSL, we need to provide a document to actually query it. And if you remember the get RFC, you cannot add a body to a get request. Uh, so we need to do a post, even though we're actually querying data. So uh, I'm querying my movies. And of course, it doesn't make sense to uh, query a specific uh, 
ID. So I'm just saying, okay, I want to do a full text search. So you can see, okay, my auto completion is hard at work since I'm too stupid to remember all of that stuff. And I simply say, okay, I want to search. And what I want to do is actually I'm looking for a, oops, that's not going to work. I have a query. And well, let's put that here. We have a query and we have a query string. And thanks for reminding me that it's a query string so I can actually do that. Even though we don't need all the complex stuff here, I can remove that again. And I'm simply saying, okay, in my query string, what I'm interested in is a query where I'm searching for Ford, for example. You, you know, Francis Ford Coppola, and as you can see, it doesn't care since it's indexed about uppercases or lowercases, it's just searching for Ford now. And one, two, three, one, two, three. Now it's correct and I can actually do my call. And you can see, okay, it took for, uh, 14 milliseconds, um, it was successful and I have one result and the relevancy of, ignore the relevancy, that's, or the, the score, um, that's how it's actually calculated. If you have multiple hits, they will be sorted by the relevancy of the hit. Um, we have a single one, so that doesn't tell you much, but we can see, okay, we found the actual document. And if you search for something like France, uh, oops, it's not giving you anything. But you can use the, the normal wildcards you would expect, and again, you, you will find something. Or for example, you don't know how to spell Coppola. Let's spell it wrong. And then I just say, I don't really know how to spell it. I want to have it fuzzy, so I add a tilt. And with the tilt, so I, now first let's try without the tilt, and it doesn't find anything. But then I'm saying, um, make this fuzzy. I don't know how it's actually spelled. Just try to find something similar. And then again, I'm finding my hit. And this is kind of the idea of full text search. So Elasticsearch was, or is still, of course, super popular for full text search. Um, so that has been working for quite some time. And later on, people then said, yeah, this is all very nice, but we want to do more with it. And so we have covered the point one, we have installed Kibana, which is the window into your data. And then people said, actually, it would be very nice for log files. So I'm just somehow taking my log files, parsing them, and adding them into Elasticsearch. And once I have my log files in there, I can actually search through all my logs and find error messages. And thanks to Kibana, I can visualize like how many errors did I have today or how many visitors did I have today. So every metric you can think about, uh, you have in some log file, you could just query with Logstash, which had the logo of a wooden log, uh, which we unfortunately have changed now, uh, but it's still very much concerned with log files and just ingesting data from different sources. It's not limited to logs, so you can query other stuff. You can query, for example, Twitter. Just to ingest lots of tweets, uh, you could use Logstash to query for jeconf, the hashtag, for example. Uh, so yeah, let's simply set up Logstash. So again, I'm simply uh, calling my playbook with Logstash. And this might take half a minute or something like that since I'm creating my uh, certificate. Uh, so just to simply show you what is going on here. Um, the first thing is I'm creating a certificate. This is just for security reasons. Um, I want my communication with Logstash to be secured. So I may have many servers out there in a distributed system and I'm not really sure what else is running around it. And I don't want anybody to eavesdrop on my log files. So I'm encrypting all that communication. So this is what I'm doing on Logstash. I'm simply generating a certificate and all my connections will then be encrypted. And then, yeah, I have the certificate for localhost since this is where my Logstash is running. And then I'm saying, okay, we have three files. First off, an input, then a filter, and then an output. So I always have these three components with Logstash. So you, you always have a source. Where's the data coming from? A file, Twitter, 
a queue, what other system you can think of. Uh, it's like we have 200 plugins, so you have lots of sources where you can get data from. The second one is the filter. With the filter, you can actually throw away stuff, or you can, for example, run regular expressions. So you know you have a log file, and it has a specific structure. So you can actually, from the string, extract meaningful information, like the date. Because you know the first 10 characters, for example, are date and timestamp. And you can apply regular expressions to that and just pass the pieces into independent strings uh, you want to be searchable. And finally, once you've passed everything out nicely, you can actually store the data somewhere. And here, which is very common, we are just inserting everything into Elasticsearch. So I'm consuming something, um, I'm parsing it, and then I'm storing it into Elasticsearch. And just to quickly show you what a filter looks like, because otherwise the file is not doing anything. Um, so I have a file called templates, and there I just keep all my template files I'm using. So uh, with, in this example, we'll get to it in a minute, I minute, uh, will just analyze the local syslog whatever is in the local syslog. So to show you that, what I'm doing here is, if something is of the type syslog that comes into my system, I use grok, grok is a uh, grab pattern, and I simply th say, okay, I have something that is a message and that has these components. And then I'm just saying, okay, first off, I have a syslog timestamp. And then I have other stuff. And these are like the independent pieces of the log file, and I want to parse them out independently so I can store and search them in a meaningful fashion. And I'm adding these two meta fields to my log file, and at the end I'm just defining um, that, for example, the syslog timestamp is not predefined in the system, and I'm just telling it, okay, this is what a syslog timestamp actually looks like and how to process that, and actually, how do, do you interpret that as a date and a timestamp so you can search by meaningful time frames? Okay, so we've set this up, and Logstash can do all the things, and it's very powerful. The only problem is Logstash uh, is written in Ruby, and it's at the moment running on JRuby. JRuby is nice, it's just not either the quickest thing to start up and the most memory efficient stuff you can run. So you probably don't want to run that on all your servers. And we had that approach in the past that people would just run a log session on all the servers, but then many people complained and said, yeah, it's heavy and it's slowing down all my servers and I don't want to run it on all of them. So we thought about it and said, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. We need something else. And this is now the final product in the Elastic Stack called Beats. Beats is kind of a more specific approach to do stuff. Um, Beats is written in Go, so it's very lightweight, and you have different beats for bis different tasks. So you have, for example, file beat. And file beat is just like tail f. It, you tell it, okay, this is a log file, just whatever goes into that log file, take it and send it somewhere else. And that somewhere else is typically log session, that example. So in my demo, um, file beats will just tail the syslog files, throw it over to Logstash. Logstash will then parse the files, and Logstash could also do some enrichment. Like you could if you have IP addresses and you want to convert them to countries. So you can afterwards say, okay, give me all the users that have accessed my server from the Ukraine. You could do that. Uh, not in that example, we'll keep it simple, but like B file beats is tailing the file, sending it over into Logstash, then you would have a few um, Logstash instances, which are central, so you don't burden that on your other servers. They will do the regular expressions and just the passing and enrichment, and then store the result into Elasticsearch. And at the top, you have Kibana to visualize it. So you have Beats and Logstash, which are kind of the ingesting uh, and parsing. Then you throw it into Elasticsearch, and then you have Kibana on top. And those are the four products we have and we're using. So, for the Beats, um, I'll just quickly run all the beats, just to configure them, and then we'll take a quick look at one of them, which is, um, what was my number, probably four. So we'll run, we'll install FileBeat, which is tailing files. Uh, after FileBeat, we have something uh, called TopBeat, 
it's just like the Linux top command, so it will gather stuff like CPU usage, um, memory usage, I.O. How full is your disk? All these things uh, will be gathered by top beat. And finally, there is packet beat. Packet beat just is like Wireshark. The problem is um, everybody doing microservices nowadays using Wireshark is getting more and more complicated. So in the past, when you had everything on one centralized server, you would just capture the package on that server and then run Wireshark against that capture. Now, if one call touches on 10 servers, it's a little harder because you need to capture packets on 20 servers then you need to combine these log files, and only then can you use Wireshark to actually see a full transaction. Like, here was the initial call from the user, and then it went through these systems, and then you actually see what has happened. And this is kind of painful, so this is why we have PacketBeat. And PacketBeat works very much like you would expect from Wireshark. It's just reading packages and extracting information from the headers, and then forwarding that information um, into Elasticsearch. And it understands widely used protocols. For example, with HTTP, it knows, OK, this was the incoming request, and this was the outgoing uh, response. And it can then tell you um, the request response, the whole transaction, took 500 milliseconds. And it can tell you the response was a 200, so everything was OK. So it knows the, the, the HTTP status codes, it knows how long it took, and it knows many different protocols. So it does the same for. MySQL, Postgres, there is a plugin for MongoDB and many other widely used protocols like DNS and whatever you, or many you can think of, and it will just extract meaningful information from the network packets. All pretty lightweight, running on all your servers, so you get the overall picture, and then you can query all of that information in Kibana. Okay, so we have installed the beats. Um, and one of the nice things about the Beats is that with Beats, uh, they bring pre-configured dashboards. So I will just show you the dashboards afterwards. They just visualize like common scenarios or common stuff you want to use. We don't need to set up anything. Uh, we can simply use them. So we're configuring our dashboards. And the final thing, which I'll run right now, is we have some plugins. Um, I will just run these plugins. Now, this might take a minute. Let's hope it works out. Also, my VM doesn't have too much memory, so sometimes it's, yeah, it's misbehaving. So let's hope this is working as well. It's always with demos. Yeah, let's see. So we're adding TimeLion. Um, TimeLion, as you might ex um, guess from the name, is to visualize timelines. So you have different metrics, and to visualize them, you can just put them against each other, and then see uh, how they're working and how stuff compares. So what you can do is uh, either with data inside your Elasticsearch cluster, you can query that, or we have APIs to external services, for example, to the World Bank, where you can query stuff like population of countries, uh, gross national product uh, production. Um, I don't know, you also have sources into stuff that is daily changing. So stock exchanges, so if it somehow makes sense to visualize stuff, you can simply query that from an external API and display it. And I hope my timeline installation works in the background. That sometimes takes a little while. Um, so all, all of the four products I've named previously are readily available, fully open source, and stable. Timeline is currently more of a research project, so the guy who originally wrote Kibana, Rashid, he is now working full time to add more features to Timeline, making a full product to have this timeline visualization a first class citizen. We are not there yet entirely, but it's in the works. And I hope this is finishing soon. The problem is um, to save memory, I'm actually stopping uh, Kibana during the installation just so that it might install quickly and I'm not getting some weird out of memory exceptions. So I hope this is running through any second now. Okay, any second now. And let's, sim let's quickly check if Kibana has come up. Kibana is running, that looks promising. So again, I'm just hitting my URL. 
And hopefully, we can now switch to the other stuff we have. So we have been in console where we've queried data. Uh, what you have, first off, you have, yeah. If you do it in that setting, you need to define a default. Uh, Yeah, we, we have a default pattern now, which is uh, file bit. Now it's happy. So you can see, I'm querying the last 15 minutes. You can pretty easily change that both quick, like give me the stuff from the last 15 minutes, whatever, or relative, like give me stuff from five minutes ago. We've just set up everything, so five minutes ago sounds reasonable. Um, I can run it, and I have three different indexes now. So we have something in file beat, something in packet beat, and something in top beat. Um, and maybe my time range is too short and I didn't produce any logs now. Let's see. Last 15 minutes should be better. And you can see, okay, not all that much has happened in my VM right now. Uh, so we have in that minute we have seven results, and in that we have nine. Can you can you read that, or is it really bad at the bottom? Is it bad? Okay, let's let's see if we can somewhat. Is that is that okay? I just put it out a little more. Okay, so you have the visualizations. You can see. Okay, I have. 16 hits over the last uh, 15 minutes. And yeah, we have some results here. Not much has happened now. And in the body, you can actually see, OK, this was the log message you got. And this is the structured form. So you have all the explicit fields, and you can query them afterwards. So you can easily say, um, give me everything from a specific host. Since everything is coming from localhost, that doesn't make much sense. But I guess you kind of get the idea. And you know, OK, it was from this log file. It was at a specific timestamp, which is here, and you could query and change all of that. And if you want to dive into stuff, you can simply mark it up here and then jump into the, the more detailed pieces and still get the same messages. Um, with the visualizations, um, these here are pre-built since we have queried uh, uh, in imported dashboard. These are, for example, we want to see the CPU usage per process. We can simply run that and wait, we can, this is not built for that screen size. Yeah, not, not here, uh, never mind. Um, so you can see we have different processes running here and they're, they're doing stuff. Uh, let's, let's change back to uh, the 15 minutes we've had. So. I just want the last 15 minutes. I hope I've got enough data in that time frame. I'm missing a button somewhere. OK, it should have adjusted. And you can see, OK, here we can see what's actually going on. And here you can see we have Java, which is the big thing. OK, Java is eating up most of my CPU. Uh, we have something node, some packet beat, some top beat, file beat, and nothing else. Um, does anybody know what the Java process is in my stack? Uh, no, actually, uh, that, that's, uh, that's Elasticsearch itself mainly. Um, and then we have Node, which is Kibana, exactly. And then we have the beats running. Uh, yeah, Logstash will be, will be in the Java process then as well. But, but um, it's, it's not doing that much. I think it has, what, passed like 16 log messages or something like that. So I don't think it's taking up all my CPU time, even though it's not that bad. Um, yeah, so this is the visualization part. You can easily click together your own visualizations. Um, and finally, there are the dashboards. And the dashboards are what you put up in your office where you have a big TV screen and you want to show off something to all the developers or operations people, and you simply show off, okay, we had, I don't know, that many requests during the last hour to our website, and how many non-200 requests you had, for example. So you can actually see, I just did a deployment, and then you can visualize and see, ha, huh, after my deployment, the 500s increased tremendously. And you know, you probably did something bad and you need to react. 
So the dashboards are what you would pick up on a big TV screen in your office just to get the general overview. So for example, the top beat dashboard looks something like this. So it's now gathering the metrics and you can see, okay, I have some, let's try to switch to five minutes and see um, if my VM is up running long enough. No results in the last five minutes, come on. Okay, well, we are going back to 15 minutes. Um, so you can see this was the system load uh, we have on our server. Uh, you can see some disk usage, which, yeah, is not all that interesting. Uh, what is probably more interesting, you can see the memory usage. And you can see we're using about 70% of the memory of our instance, so this is fine. Maybe we need to increase it in the future. Uh, you can see, okay, CPU-wise, it was pretty high. It's getting lower now, probably okay. And down here, you can actually see which processes are taking how much memory, and or CPU and memory. And again, Java is the main offender, and Node uses something, and then the beats, but nothing else. And then you can actually see which processes are most active and taking most of your CPU and memory and stuff. So this is the general visualization. We have the same for, for example, packets. Um, let's see if HTTP gives us something meaningful. And you can see, okay, we did some transactions here, some transactions here. Um, since only I am accessing it, it's not that interesting, but I guess you get the idea what you could do in your job. And in total, I have now issued 55 commands and all of them were 200s. And, okay, I don't have any error codes, too bad. And you can actually see which were the top URLs I hit. So you don't need to customize that for your application. This is just extracted from the HTTP headers. So all from the headers, you get lots of information. And it's not bound only to HTTP, but different protocols as well. And finally, just to show you timeline, and this is really small. Yeah, I'm, I guess this is fine. And here I can actually say how many rows it should have. So is this readable at the bottom? Let's make it a little smaller. Okay, so here I'm just graphing like how many events do I have uh, in my role system? And now, for example, I can simply say um, I only want to have the stuff from file beats. And you can see, okay, that's that's fewer entries. Just here we had a spike. Uh, everything else is pretty flat. And this is a custom syntax again, uh, but you can simply say, okay, .es is accessing an elastic search index. And then I'm saying, okay, I want to contrast that with file B, uh, packet B, for example. And you can see, okay, uh, we have more packet beats than we have five beats. And since nobody knows what the Q um, things are, you can actually label stuff and simply say, okay, this is a packet beat, and it will put the right name here, and you can hide and display them, and you can hover over it to see the actual points, and you can do lots of other stuff with it. Uh, so you can simply add labels to, to influence how it's displayed. And like I said, uh, you can pull in external data, for example, uh, we can query uh, the population of Germany versus the population of yeah, France, because they, they don't like each other. Uh, the only thing we need to remember is over the last 15 minutes, every minute doesn't make much sense here. Um, so I'm saying for the last years, let's say the last 60 years, and every minute again doesn't make much sense because I want that on a yearly basis and I want to query it over those two. And if I'm Wi-Fi is working, I should get kind of a graph. And you, as you can see, the population of Germany used to be much higher, but they are getting closer and closer together. And with this stuff, you could actually just combine the two and then say, I want just the derivative of the two. And then you can see the actual change. And then you can see the population of France is pretty steadily growing, whereas Germany, sometimes it's growing, sometimes it's uh, uh, slowing down or even 
shrinking. And I don't know, whatever happened here, here there must be some outliers in the data. So with that, you can actually visualize your data in a quite nice way and get an overview. OK, so since time is nearly up, I will jump to the conclusion, I guess. If you want to know more, uh, the slides are going up in a few minutes, so you can simply look at it. So just to put that in. So these were, I hope you can read the components at the bottom, uh, the main components we stop, spoke about. So beats is the li are the lightweight agents uh, you put on all your servers, gathering whatever information you have, like top, log files, packets, and there are many community contributed beats as well, and we were working on something called metric beats, where you can easily ingest metrics from various sources. And you can either insert this into Elasticsearch directly, where it will be stored, indexed, and can then be searched. Or you can forward stuff to Logstash, which will pass and enrich your files. And at the very end, you can visualize, uh, graph, query, explore it in Kibana. And these four components together are what's currently called the Elastic Stack. It used to be the Elk Stack when we just had uh, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, ALK, Elk. But the Elk was retired because we have now Beats. And in the, at first, we, we tried to, to change the acronym and make it Elk B with just a B at the end, uh, or Belk. And we even had a logo where it was a B with the Elk horns. But it, just didn't work, and if we want to add more products in the future, it won't work again, so we kind of said, okay, sorry, Elk, you, you're going into retirement, uh, we'll just call it the Elastic Stack. And to add confusion, the company is called Elastic, since we're not doing only Elastic Search, but all the products, so the company is Elastic. The stack is also Elastic Stack, and the thing that is storing your data in which you can query is called Elastic Search. And 90% of the people coming to me and asking a question are using the wrong name. And you always need to guess, like, which, which one are they talking about? And if you want to give it a try, again, this is the URL. Uh, you can simply download it, do Vagrant up, and get everything up and running in, how long did we take? Like 20 minutes, probably, at least once the downloads have finished. Uh, but after that, it's just super easy to get up and running with them. And yeah, give it a try. It's normally super easy. Yeah, if you have any questions now or later today, and I still have some stickers in front, I think, otherwise I can grab some more. Um, yeah, grab stickers, and we even have a few bottle openers left. And this is it for me. Any questions? Yes. Yes. With Beats, there are two modes. Um, the one that FileBeats is using is the nicer one because you have the file and it just knows, okay, I was at this point in the file, I'm just stopping and I will remember where I was. And as soon as the connection is re-established, it will just continue from that point and read the rest. The problem is with stuff like PacketBeat, you don't have anything uh, on the disk. So it, will, it has a buffer and it will try to store as much data as it has. But at some point, it, the buffer will run over and it will throw away the, the, the oldest stuff. So file beats shouldn't lose any data. Packet beat uh, will potentially lose data. And these are the two modes the beats support. And if you want to write your own beats, there is a basic library called libbeat. All our beats are also based on that. And this is uh, stuff this already provides. So it provides the connection to Logstash or Elasticsearch directly, or Redis and Kibana are also supported to push your stuff there. It, provides stuff like security and this synchronous or asynchronous mode. So this you can set up very easily and this is the general approach of how it works. Any other questions? Sure. Um, so there is an API for Kibana at the moment, uh, but it's not stable. And there are no guarantees it stays the same way it is at the moment. This is pretty experimental because many people want to do that. Uh, there is an API, people are experimenting with it, but it's not frozen yet. We don't make any guarantees, and my colleagues would kill me if I would. So yes, you can use it. Um, it works, uh, but it's experimental and it might change in the future. Um, well, you can either just look at, at the documentation or there are also like people writing plugins for Kibana. Uh, there are some, they are not so popular, uh, but 
there are some. So there are examples where people just build their own, much like Timeline, the plugin, you can write your own plugins and then just visualize whatever you want in there. So yes, you can extend that. Um, but again, it's, it's not frozen. Be careful. I have warned you. <laughs> How are we doing time-wise? Yeah, it's quarter past. Um, yeah, if there are no more questions, just come to me afterwards if anything comes to your mind.